To achieve this effect what I want to do is position the sun on the horizon somewhere in front of the camera. If you can't see the horizon you can use this little control here to turn the horizon on and off in the wireframe. The drawback of having the horizon drawn in like this is it makes things disappear when they go underground. So if I start dropping this sphere at uh, zero in the, uh, in the y direction it just vanishes. So if you need to see things when they're underground like so you need to get rid of the horizon. But uh, that's just a by the by. So uh, when I've got the horizon in view in the wireframe view by clicking on that little control down there I then want to position the sun somewhere about here. Click on sky and fog and the rollerball control has another option. If you hold down the shift and the control key and double click on the rollerball then hold down the control and the alt key and single click in the wireframe view you now have this option to position this icon which represents the sun in the scene. So you can position the sun very accurately on the horizon. I'll just give that a quick render so you can see how that looks. So at the moment the overall aim of this is to create a sunset effect with stars that are visible. So I'm going to tilt the camera back so we're featuring mostly the sky so we get a bit more sky in view and for stars a fairly wide field of view is necessary. The bright stars aren't very small uh, what I'm currently operating with, I'll switch to the overhead view and just move this around so we can select the perspective camera because I like to work from the perspective camera because I like to know where the camera is. If we go into attributes you see I've got a field of view of 120 degrees at a scale of 100% which is wider than the default setting and this will help make the stars a little bit smaller and look more realistic. The next thing to do then is with this uh, cloud control here is flatten out the cloud response so there's no procedural effect within the clouds so just a uniform density across the entire sky and I'm going to turn on the cumulus of cloud effect as well if you look in the thumbnail you can see we're getting some idea of what's going on here I want to set up a gradient in the sky uh, and because I'm capturing this as a HDRI image then I'm going to add it back in and add the stars in and then get the glowing effect I don't want any real detail in the sky. I can't do much about the sun being in the sky, so that's going to add some effect. And uh, I only want to capture it at a low resolution because it's not really necessary to capture it at a high resolution because there's going to be no detail. And if the sun sh looks pixelated when I've added it back in, I just cover that up with another object. The next thing to do then is to switch from the soft sky option to the custom sky option because it allows us more control over the uh, sky gradients. I'm going to have the sky, this very dark blue colour here, which is, I'm just picking it from the existing palette, which makes life easier. If you've got two monitors, you can get a sunset scene up and pick that from the uh, the other monitor, but I'll, I'll do it all in this monitor to make things easier for you. Right, hold the Alt key down and click on this colour swatch here, which is the horizon colour, and this affects the stratus layer of cloud, which is why I left the clouds in. So if I choose a very deep red here you see you get a red band in here and I'm also going to choose a deep red for the haze color so that fills in at the horizon but I'm going to modify that by the sun color using an option in atmospherics and finally for the sun glow color I'm going to choose this blue color so that's the gradient around the area around the sun now if I go into the Skylab and go to atmosphere I want to set this so I got a preview so render in scene so that gives me a shot from the perspective camera blend with sun so you can see that's lit the horizon up because the sun color has gone into the haze and by blending haze and fog not worried about fog here anyway when we get a gradient up to the point where the sun is left and right so it's not just a uniform band across the horizon and at this point we're now more or less ready to capture this I'm just going to make a few more modifications so we could try making the sun a vibrant yellow colour and that will affect the overall sky. So you can see now it's gone very orange, probably a bit too much. So I've got the cloud height control here which affects the thickness of the haze band as well. But because we're using clouds too, then we can move this banded area up and down and also consider the cloud coverage which affects the cumulus cloud. I'll start by modifying the height and see how that affects it. You can see the not too much of an effect, so probably got too much cloud cover. So I'll thin the cloud cover out a bit. So you can see we've got a very low band transition zone there. And then I'll lift the cloud height back up again. And you can see 
in the thumbnail how it's thickening the haze effect. So what I'm looking for really is a steady gradient towards the horizon. If I need to have more specific control over the sun color, hold the alt key down, click on the color swatch, you see I've not got any blue in there. So I want some blue and so I'll, I'll tone this orange up a bit and see if I can get a bit more light in this area here. So this is going to be my gradient for the stars to go on top of. As things stand you couldn't get any stars really visible on this sky which is a limitation within the way that the sky works in Bryce but one we can get around now thanks to HDRI. So if I just show you this uh, sun and moon, if I turn the stars on, go click on celestial custom sky stars, turn the intensity up, turn the amount right up and check out of there and we'll see that the sky is so light that you can't can't detect any stars. Even though uh, the stars will show up in the daylight, it's just they're very dim. So we'll go back. Even if this is going to be a sunset, so you, you under some circumstances you do get to see stars when when the sun's going down. Though, so that's the kind of situation we're trying to simulate. I'll just turn those stars off now to avoid any pollution in the uh, image. You can't really see any difference here. And then go back into the Skylab image-based lighting. Use HDRI image. Sky Dome only. Use Sky. Just leave it at the default resolution. So there you go. That's the upper hemisphere of the sky. That's the bit that's in front of us and that's the bit that's directly behind us, as is all this edge. So you have to imagine that's wrapped right round the, the top of the camera. Uh, infinitely, well, simulated infinitely distance from the camera. Right. Turn the quality down to 16. Get rid of specular effect and HDRI effect. If we need inner lighting, we'll just turn the sun back on like so. And here's the critical step. Use as background and add to sky. So you see in the preview, things have gone very bright. But if we go to sun and moon now, we'll turn the stars back on. It's remembered the settings that I put in before. So that's custom field, stars, full intensity, full amount. Back to image-based lighting. So this is where it's getting added in. This is the intensity. And that's probably going to be a bit bright. So. I'll turn that intensity down to 3 and then I'll go back out of here because it's easier to control it this way and go to this color swatch and set these all to fully black. So I'll just pick black out of the interface there and at this point this is the situation we're in. So this uh, blob here is the the sun. It looks a bit pixelated because it's only captured at a low resolution but we can either cover that up with a sphere like just a Bryce uh, sphere that's that's set to ambient white but it, well, I'm going hoping to get it covered up by the sun with a bit more processing so at this point get rid of your stratus clouds and your cumulus clouds we're not needing those anymore so now we can start to see the stars and you might also see there's a little bit of glow about them and that's the effect I'm aiming for right I'm going to try turning the sun up a bit brighter so you can see that that's probably a bit too bright. So if I press Ctrl Z, I can take it back down again. I'm just aiming really to cover up this square blob. So I'll tilt the sun back slightly so it's higher up in the sky. Oh, no, it's gone too far. Right, I'll try repositioning Ctrl and Alt and click on the little... That's it. You see now I get into a position where I can position the sun a little bit over that. If I can see where the the circle of the sun is and then I can start to modify the hay setting so that's going to cover that lighter area up if I just make the sun a little bit brighter like so you see we're starting to lose that that little square pixels now it's changed the color of the sky slightly uh, I mean I'm torn really I'll do control Z again go back to orange and I think what I'll do is I'll just cover that circle up and then I can stay with this nice bright orange color. So create create a default Bryce sphere. We don't need this uh, too far away from the camera. It's not, there's not much in our scene. If there was things in our scene then I'd position this behind that. Position that over the position of the sun. Shrink it down a bit. And as long as it doesn't get lost in the haze. So we'll check that, that the haze isn't covering that up. So that looks fully dark. Sky and fog. Set the global ambient color to white, go into the material for this object and set it to fully white ambient and then I'll just turn cast shadows off, receive shadows and self shadows 
so that is just going to be if you like the sun so there you go it it looks uh, a bit distorted and that's because of the wider field of view we've got you could probably reduce the effect of that distortion by going into the material and choosing fuzzy and that will soften the edges off a bit and help it blend it into where the sun should be in the sky so that's covered up those blobs that were left in by the low resolution HDR image and otherwise you can't tell it's low resolution because we're just adding information on to a smooth gradient so the final step in this is to consider how we can control the glow effect of these stars uh, the reason they're glowing so well is due to adding the intensity and so whatever their glow is is getting added to by the HDR so if we can lower the intensity a bit more it looks like it's getting further towards dark and then we just need to increase the contrast a bit with the glow so back into the Skylab here and to atmosphere and it's an interaction with the stars and the haze effect if you lower the thickness and increase the density we get a similar effect over the horizon but you'll see more glow so if I, I'll emphasize this really exaggerated yeah by uh, by doing that and you can see now the full extent of the glow for each one of these stars so obviously that's going a bit far so it's a balancing between these two effects density and thickness higher density more glow you're just lowering the thickness to give the density of haze at the horizon more or less the same so you're getting the a nice gradient there and the other thing your other control here is color perspective uh, by default things tend to go a bit sort of bluey gray in the atmosphere as they get into the distance but you can change that balance so if you switch color perspective on you can influence the effect on the haze quite dramatically uh, too much dramatically there obviously and if, if I just uh, set this up into its most extreme form here you see that the the glow's got uh, way too strong so I'll just go back in here so there's something to experiment with I won't bother with that right now but you can see the results in the thumbnail gives you some nice uh, control over uh, extreme effects uh, otherwise not that out and I'll so set the density up a bit but not too much uh, the red glow at the moment is being governed by the haze colour but also that's affecting what's happening on the horizon so if we made that green you'd see that it'd have quite a dramatic effect on the outside edge here the haze close to the suns with our blend with sun option there is blending this colour in so you can see that colour is that colour there but as things get back out to the outside and with the star glow it's being influenced by the green so you can see these two colours here are having that effect so if we make that to red then you can see what's happening there so I'll just do control Z oh I can't go back that way um, that was orangey color wasn't it uh, yep and I'll make this back to a, a deep red color like so okay check out of there and we'll give that a render are those glowing enough well that's up to you if you want them to stand out more then increase the density of the haze but otherwise that's the end of the video so I'll just widen the field of view so you can see what's going on around you and uh, if you want to get an, um, a 360 degree view you've got 360 degree panoramic projection but if you see this sort of sinusoidal effect on the horizon that's because the camera is uh, at a tilted angle so if you're going to do panoramic projection you want to set your camera so that it's not tilted back so that's X there right and now we'll have a level horizon okay and if you wanted that to be all sky uh, I'll just show you one last thing here you have got uh, pan V pan vertical and pan H that affect the camera in this respect so it's like moving the canvas rather than moving the camera and it's an offset so I think if I go positive value here then that will sync the horizon so there you go the, the effect at the top here is rather extreme because it's the Bryce's built-in panoramic camera if you want to uh, wide-angle lenses then uh, Horo and I have a product that d does that okay then that's the end of the video hope you found that interesting and useful and you'll experiment with this effect in your own renders